Like I said, you know, we've just come to the city and, and uh, I said, I don't want to start something and get into something that's not going to finish. I didn't know Pastor Todd then. I didn't know anything about the ministry. I didn't know anything about water immersions. But the first time that we went to see Pastor Todd, we took a group of people and, and, and for whatever reason, there was a couple thousand people there. And for whatever reason, the Lord led us all the way through the pastor, through security, all the way down to Pastor Todd. And we got the meeting for the very first time. And when I met him, it settled the question. I didn't even see the water yet. I hadn't even seen what happened in the water. I seen the man behind what God is doing and how he's working through Pastor Todd. A man that was humble. And he is such a neat person to be around. And I'm grateful today that we said yes to the water immersions. We've had over 4,500 healings here in the water in Martinsville, Indiana. Pastor Todd has had, I know, 50,000 plus in Dawsonville, Georgia, let alone everywhere around the world that he's going. People are getting in bathtubs. They're just getting in their tubs. They're filling their tubs up full of water and getting in them saying, God, touch me, touch me. So it's my privilege to introduce you to, to my pastor, Pastor Todd Smith from North Georgia Revival. So let's welcome him. Can I move that up a little bit up here? Yeah, I don't want to praise him. Thank you, Wes. Thank you, Jessica, for leading us in worship. No, I'm good. I'm great. Wow, you look great, people. I mean, y'all look pretty, too. Y'all look pretty amazing. Don't let that go to your head, but I'm glad to be in uh, Martinsville. We got hurricane winds and weather down in Dawsonville, so I flew out this morning, praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Jason, Pastor Shelley, all the wonderful people here at Life of Love. I love this house. This is incredible. I was just with Dr. Robert Slairdon yesterday. We sat down for a cup of coffee, and we just... He just loves this house. We talked about what God's doing here, and he can't wait to be back in June of 2025. Uh, he is absolutely phenomenal. He preached for us last night, and I sat on the edge of my seat just because of what he carries. So uh, as, as they said, mark your calendar, go ahead and save the day, and that is Father's Day in June. But um, it's a delight to be here tonight. If this is the first time to be uh, in one of the services that I have been talking and will be talking about immersions and the miracles, raise your hand. If this is your first time here tonight with that, okay, several of you, thank you for coming. Wow. My goodness. Um, this is this very special place, Pastor Jason. The presence of God's in this room. You've, you and your wife and your team have done a phenomenal job in staying with it. And also the continuation of the, of the immersions. It's, um, it's hard work. How many of you know that? That it's hard work, you know? It, but it's glorious. It's, you get to see things you've never seen before, right? Um, but it's, it's taxing on the body. It, you can get fatigued, get mad at one another. Not that y'all ever do that, but you could. So uh, tonight's going to be powerful. I can't wait to, to see what the Lord's going to do in the water. Karen sends her love. To you guys. How many of y'all are in Caneo Ministry Training Center? Raise your hand. Wow, 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 wow. If you're not, you're going to be. There's two types of people in the room. Those that are in Caneo and those are about to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do y'all know we started Caneo for Kids? Do y'all know that? Called Caneo Kids. And if you have a child um, and you're interested in having Caneo, Karen teach them. Now watch this about blood covenant. She just filmed last week uh, the part on the blood covenant when, he, when she dealt with the identity of, a chi uh, of who you are in Christ. She dealt with the sexual dysphoria and the um, agenda of the enemy who wants to cloud our young people's judgment of who they are. And she nailed it. She began the teaching in the presence of God showed up. Now watch this, and she just begins to cry in the middle of that. There is an anointing on this. 
kids will learn who they are biblically. They'll understand how to read the Bible, how to talk to God, how to journal. Life and ministry of Jesus, their authority. Come on. All right. Praise the Lord. I love it. So if you're interested in that, just see us or go to our website. And I just want to say this about Caneo Kids. We had no idea what God was going to be doing with this. We just thought it would be for, uh, for some kids that are interested in Caneo because their parents are homeschool co-ops, perhaps. We now have Christian schools reaching out to us. Um, in fact, there was a Christian school in the state of New York that started teaching this to their kids, showing the video, 45-minute video in the classroom, The Spirit of God Falls. The Spirit on week number one, the Spirit of God falls, and um, and the headmaster just blown away. Reaches out to the New York State Board of Education. Now listen to this, and and said, "This is an elective, but I need you to take a look at this and see if we can make this a a credited rather than being an elective, but be uh, an elect not an elective but accredited biblical history." The head of the State Board of Education in New York watched it. Wow. Calls back and says, the content and the quality is outstanding. Movement from an elective to accredited. And then... The Christian head, the, the head of all Christian schools in the state of New York heard about it, came and observed the kids in the classroom watching it, watched them for about 10 minutes. They were mesmerized by what they were hearing. They go out for 15 minutes and they come back. First and second graders are taking notes. They said, Here's a list of 865 Christian schools in the state of New York. Contact them about this content. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so if you're interested in that, see us. You can get it so cheap uh, for, your, for your kids, for you. Um, I mean, listen, we'll pay 100 bucks for a pair of Snickers. Right? Uh, we'll pay $88 for a video game. And just wing it so that our, I hope that our kids just catch it along the way. That's about to change in, in this house too. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I didn't mean to go into all that, but I'm excited about that. There's a man that builds charter schools in the state of Georgia. Yeah, bring that up. In the state of Georgia, South Carolina, Texas. They're going to make this a part of the curriculum of all the charter schools that they build. Yeah, praise the Lord. Amen. Give God glory. Amen. Yes, well, it's great to be here. I'm going to be just a few moments, and then we're going to get in the water tonight. Uh, I'm among friends, so I'm going to talk to you like friends, all right? This is a home away from home. I just love Indiana. I do. I love Martinsville. There's, somebody just needs to give me a home. <laughs> I'm just serious. All right, let's do that. Uh, yeah, why not? You have not because you ask not. Now, I, I don't want your basement. Just a nice dwelling place. Maybe with some acreage so I can deer hunt up here anyway. So if you feel the leading of the Holy Spirit, talk, talk to me later. No, I'm, I don't want to. Listen, um, I want to invite all of you guys uh, that have not registered. I want you to come to our conference, which begins a week from this coming Sunday night called Run. Uh, this is for everyone in the body of Christ, leaders and pastors. And this is going to be probably one of the most significant and severe and devastating conferences we've ever been a part of. And when I say devastating, I mean that in a beautiful way, that the Lord's going to bring a, a glorious destruction to our hearts and, and lives and then mend us back together appropriately, right? Um, Zach Mearcrees from the Asbury Revival will be speaking on Monday night. Many of you heard and remember that move. Pastor Cheon, Prophet Jeremiah Johnson, and many others. So there's the QR code register, and uh, take advantage of that if you would, all right? 
One, uh, couple more announcements. Who's read this book, Unless We Pray? Who's read that? All right, if you don't have it, we have a few copies out in um, the uh, Vestavio lobby area. Has this book helped you? That's what I want to know. Has it helped you? I had a, a man reach out to me in another country, Pakistan to be specific, and he said to me, Todd, I got a hold of your book, and it's changed my prayer life. This is a pastor. He asked for permission to translate it into Urdu, the language that very, I mean, millions of uh, Pakistanians speak, Afghans speak, Iranians speak uh, much of this language. And he said, can I translate this book into the Urdu language? And I said, Pastor, I don't, I don't own the book. I wrote it, but when you sign with the publisher, they own all the rights and all of that. And I said, I have to get permission. And I called them, and they said, let's do it. And they don't get a dime. They're just saying, let him translate it, and let's let it touch the Middle East. Praise yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you a video, and I'll, and I'll slip out of the way, um, of why this is important. Only 2% of Pakistan's Christian. So that's not a lot, but... Um, but it's a significant move of God. The Muslims in Pakistan feel the pressure of Jesus. And recently they've been lashing out at churches and burning churches, destroying churches and burning the homes of Christians. It is now important for the body of Christ to do what it can to help Pakistan. Take a look at this. It's about 30 seconds, then I'll come back. I'll need... <laughs> That's pretty intense, is it? That's what's happening in Pakistan, not every day, but every believer's life is on the verge of, could be taken from them because of their faith. And I'm talking about aggressive, full gospel preaching churches. When this pastor read the book, he said, my church needs this book. I heard, I heard in my spirit, I said, Pastor, I want to give this book to you absolutely free, but I'm not only going to give enough for you, but I want to give 10,000 copies to be distributed absolutely free so they don't pay a dime. Their cost of living is not like ours. They don't have Christian books like what we have. Okay, It is a rare thing for them to have a Christian book outside of the Bible. Does that make sense? So one book will be read by multiple people and probably multiple families. It'll be read and passed down and passed down and passed down. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you want to help with this, at the table are, just look at this QR code right here. The QR code will take you to a site that you can donate and give one book for $12. All right? Two books for 24 3 for 36 10 for 120 Do the math. All right? Um, I had a man come up to me and said, Todd, or he, he emailed me and he said, call me. And I talked to him and he says, I feel the Lord saying he, that he alone would boot, do 5,000 copies. And he said, I'll do $60,000 to cover for 5,000. And, and so we're trying to raise the money for the remaining 5,000 to make up the ten. Now, at our pastor's conference, we're going to raise another 3000 because Bishop Lance Johnson, how many of you know Bishop Lance, Pastor Chris McDonald, are going to Pakistan to do a crusade, and 400,000 people are going to show up. They're doing a pastor's conference with 3,000 pastors. So we're going to give 3000 in addition to the 10000 to pastors. But if you guys can help me here to get to that 10,000 mark, that would be incredible. So you can do that. Go to the table and say, I want to donate one, two, five, ten. Listen, a cup of coffee costs $12 almost today. 
You go to Chick-fil-A, you can't get out of there without $13, $15, right? Talk to me. So just pray about it. No pressure. I think everybody can do at least one, maybe two or three, maybe five or six. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Just do what the Lord says. That's all I need you to do. Pastor Jason, thank you for letting me share that. Praise His holy name. I, um, I want to show you a picture that you've never seen before. This is the only picture that was taken the night that the glory of the Lord fell in Dawsonville, Georgia. The only photograph. We didn't have Sunday night services, but the Lord was moving after our fast and the presence of God was strong and we decided to have Bishop Lance Johnson in for a men's meeting, Sunday morning service. God showed up in the morning service and we said, hey, y'all come back tonight. And we had no idea that when we gathered together that evening, February the 11th, 2018, that it would release and open up the floodgates to the North Georgia Revival and the immersion revival that we're in right now. So this, let me set it up for you. Um, our praise and worship was so strong that I got up to transition from right over there to take the platform to get ready to receive an offering and get Bishop up to preach. And I didn't make it to the, um, the transition. I got up on the platform and the presence of God was so heavy that I just knelt down on my, on my knees. And then I just went to my back. Now, I don't fall in the Spirit simply because other people are falling. And I appreciate every person in this room that has that attitude. If you fall on the ground, I want it to be God. Right? And so, my leaders, Pastor Marty and Danny Rafford, knew that if I'm on my back, something must be happening but they were concerned because I, I, I don't fall unless it's God. So they're worshiping, the people are worshiping and the presence of God is so strong on the platform and I'm on my back and I haven't moved. Well, they came up to check on me. Here's the only photograph that was taken of the North Georgia Revival the night that it started. And it was taken from Miss Paula Jo. From her cell phone where she always sits. Pastor Marty's on the left. And, and my uh, dear friend, Danny, you see him when he comes. And they kneel over me and they ask me one question. Pastor, we want to know. Are you okay? Because they, they knew if I'm on my back, either I'm dead or it's God. They had to find out because I was just... I opened my eyes and I looked at them and I said, I'm fine. He is here. Come on, let's give God glory. Only photograph. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The rest is history. Or maybe not history yet. Maybe, yeah, because we're not done yet. And we've been 347 weeks this coming Sunday night. And tens of thousands baptized. And this is going to happen in this room tonight. Hallelujah. Now, go to your Bibles. I want you to go to three scriptures. I'm going to give you these three scriptures. I'm going to share some testimonies, what God's doing. I feel the glory of the Lord, the presence of God in this room. I want to build your faith. I want to go after something specific tonight. I think that the devil's going to ruin the day that, uh, that he hampered and bothered you. I think that he's going to be tormented tonight. The devil's going to be tormented tonight as people find freedom, people find peace. Yeah, I, I, I release that in this atmosphere. I'm not interested, though, 
in just having a service where you get wet. I'm interested in helping this house continue to host the presence of God so that the move of God here in Martinsville can be sustained. Yeah, right? Talk to me. I want you to appreciate what is happening in this house. Now think about this tonight. It is a Monday night. It is a school night. It is a work night. Uh, not Thursday. What, what, what day is this? Thursday. <laughs> is it Thursday? <laughs> I was in Tennessee Monday and Tuesday. Prior to that, I was in Florida the Thursday, Friday, and the Monday and Tuesday, I was in Pennsylvania, and then Monday, I'll be in Alaska. So I really don't know what time zone I'm in. Is it daylight or dark outside? All, all I know, he, you're in here, I'm in here, and I love it. So is it Thursday night? So it's a school night and a work night on this Thursday night. And so I want, I want you guys to appreciate that on this Thursday night, this building, look at the crowd that's in this room. There is a hunger in Martinsville. I, I want you to know how valuable this piece of real estate is, not in dollars and cents, but how valuable it is to the heart of God. This is not happening everywhere. Even the opportunity to even come and to believe God for a miracle is not happening everywhere. Because, and I'm not being critical, but you can go to a church and have all the right, you know, they're teaching from the Bible, they're singing great songs and wonderful programs, but the opportunity to even have your hope lifted, that there is a even remote possibility that God can touch you, deliver you, and heal you. You're in a very special environment tonight. And, I'm, and, and I'm, I want you to understand that. There are, in, like in Dawsonville, in, in our area, there are bigger churches, more talented staff, probably more polished program. Right? Okay? So don't judge a place based upon do they have all the bells and whistles. You're not buying an automobile. You're not buying a place for comfort, a smooth ride. Find a place where the glory of the Lord is resonating, where they dare to believe that God is who He says He is, and that He does what... Hallelujah, right? Okay, all right. Well, your kids may like, you know, all the niceties and, you know, the bells and whistles of children's ministry where they slide into a classroom through a 12-foot slide and, you know, they've got multiple consoles where they can play games and be entertained and, and jumpy houses and things like that. And we love those things. There's nothing wrong with that. But don't choose a place because of the bells and whistles. Choose a place sometimes, you know, that may be a little rugged, that may be a little bit unpolished. Put your finger up. Find where the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing. Let this be the indicator. God, show me where you're moving. And Lord, that's where I want to camp my family. That's where I want to put my children. That's where I want my marriage to be. That's what I want to be under. That's what I want my business to be under. Not who I can contact in the chair next to me, but God, I need your favor upon me. All right, are you too much too fast? All right. It's amazing how we, you know, we, we choose our churches based upon what we like, how we feel, rather than, God, where is it that you're moving? I want to position myself there. Uh, now, I said all of that to say that this is pretty bizarre in a beautiful, spiritually way, spiritual way. You, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not being, 
um, disrespectful, but when you come to Dawsonville and there are three above ground swimming pools that are heated to 100 degrees 24 hours a day, and then our other baptismal pool, and you walk in and a guest sees that and they're thinking, Dear Lord, what have I got myself into? I've heard about this place. These people are nuts. And yeah, 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 yeah. And you really have to, yeah, and you really have to. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. I mean, you think about it. Um, Jesus, the forerunner, or not, I mean, John the Baptist, the forerunner to Jesus. You know, he didn't send him out there in a nice robe. You know, clean cut, you know, as, as his spokesperson, as his lead man, trying to put forth the great image. I mean, imagine having John the Baptist on your Facebook page. I mean, you look at our, you look at our websites. I mean, let me, you, I mean, I'm not saying this is wrong, but you look at it because we, uh, a lot of people understand marketing and branding that, you know, you, you really want to put somebody out there that's like got, you know, at least the image of it's all together. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, you know, you got, you got your worship team, you know, the lights are right on your Facebook and the, the, the fog is right and all the nice looking people, you know, are on the platform, you know, everybody looks a certain way and, 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 <laughs> and then there's John the Baptist <laughs> dressed in camel's clothing. Leather, eating locusts and wild honey, probably hair everywhere. I mean, I, I mean, you know, he lived out in the wilderness. He wasn't able to go to the salon. You know, he wasn't able to get, you know, clippings and, you know, his eyebrows clipped, his hair out of his ears. You know, I, I, I'm just imagining the worst of all kinds of things right here. You know, just a wild, a, a wild man. And there he, I mean, of all the things that Jesus could have done, he said, this is how I'm going to introduce. And, and, and I, I guess I said all of that to say, and you think about, we're here with baptisms. And it didn't get any better. Jesus said, let's do the new church some kind of way, too. You know, when he birthed the new church, they all called them drunkards. Be careful not to choose a house based upon the image. Just find some crazy man. <laughs> that, that, listen, that's preparing the way of the Lord. Right? That's making straight the pathway of the Lord. That, that's what, that's, you need to follow a man and a woman, or woman and a man, whatever the case may be, that's making the pathway of the Lord very clear and clearing the way so that the Lord can come and do what He does. A man that says, i got to continually decrease so that He can increase. I've got to bow out of the way so that Jesus can take center stage. That's why I say that the move of God that is coming, that is here, and manifesting even exponentially now, is going to reach its height and have its greatest impact in small to mid-sized churches. Now let me say that and clarify. I'm not anti-big church. I love big churches, right? Numbers are not bad. I mean, in fact, he has a book of the Bible called Numbers. So, uh, mega, giga churches, large churches are not God's enemy. 
But I think God's doing something in the small to mid-sized churches. Why? Here's one of the reasons. One, not all of them. 92% of all churches, or 92% of all people, no, yes, yeah, 92% of all people in America attend a church under 1,000 people. It is impossible for usually for a big and large church with thousands upon thousands of people to transition and to move and to turn on a dime. Okay? It's just the way it is. Any of you know if you have a small business of three employees, you can make a quick change and not fall off the rails. But if you have 5,000 people showing up, and you have 150 staff members, it's more difficult to convince 150 staff members that we're going to stop what we're doing, and we've been doing for 10 years, and turn this way. They can eventually turn, but they can't turn quickly. But a smaller church of 80, 150, the man or woman of God can stand up and a move of God happen and 150 of us get on board real quick. And then those 150 are now on board can have an explosion of the fire of God that impacts a community. Talk to me. Now, will the big churches be involved? It's just going to take them a little bit longer because their cruise ships... Car, listen, and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way like they're playing. It just means they're big, big ships like a, a, a cargo sh ship. They're turning, but you put a speedboat out there. Or even a dinner boat with a hundred people on it. Talk to me. Are you all right? So I just want, I want you to know what I'm sensing. Everywhere I go, I go to smaller churches. Under a thousand people. And God's moving. How many people did you say y'all baptized? 4,500 people. In a city that's not Indy, okay? Not Chicago. Not Detroit. Not Atlanta, but Martinsville. You've baptized more people than we have in our whole town. Well, where are they? Why isn't our church triple the size if we baptize 4,500? Because it is not your pastor's goal to build a big church but to host the presence of God and to create a place where people from all over Indiana, Illinois, can come down and meet God in the water and not be possessive of them. God has found a couple that says, Lord, it's not my church, it's not my brand, it's not my image. I just want to create an environment where you can come and move. This is rare, but I'm seeing it everywhere I go. I'm seeing it everywhere I go. I got off a plane in Washington or in Portland and we traveled across the state line into Washington and I was uh, getting ready to do a meeting. He picks me up at the airport, the pastor does, and he goes, oh, I forgot to tell you. That's always nervous when you get off the plane and you're five minutes, ten minutes into the car headed to your hotel room and he says, I forgot to tell you. I had no idea what was coming next. He says, we only have ten people. I said, I never asked you. I said, you hungry? He says, I'm hungry. I said, that's all that matters. Because I know that God loves pastors, whether they're pastoring 5, 50, 500, 5,000, 50. But there's something special about the man and woman of God that will stay with it. Every week, fighting budget needs. Every week, people leaving and coming. Every week having to clean the toilets. Every week having to do all the chores. Every week trying to get things done so that he can create and prepare the way of the Lord. We pull into the church that night. There's 60 people in the building. He walks up to me and he says, Pastor, we've never had this many people in the building. 
But can you imagine this 50, that 50, that 50, that 100? Listen, you get 100 of those, that's 5,000 people. 5,000 individual churches now ignited in revival fire. Not just one big church. Hallelujah. All right, you guys good? Well, welcome to the life of love. If you're looking for a church home, welcome home. Don't even pray about it. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. All right, now watch this very quickly. I've been to New York, I think, five times this year. God's doing something in New York. Y'all are about to be included on it. I can't tell you publicly. I'm going to tell you, Pastor, tomorrow what God's doing in New York. Life of love is about to have a major impact in New York. Not just New York, but New York City. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't tell you. We'll release it at the pastor's conference, but I got to tell Pastor tomorrow. It's going to be fire. I said fire. But something's happening in New York. Been there five times. Told you about the Board of Education. Told you about the Christian schools being opened up to us. My Lord in heaven. So I go to this place in New York, right off of Long Island. Second time I'd been there in like four or five months. And I do in a baptism service. The presence of God falls in the sanctuary. You could just feel the... The Lord, as if he's on the starting line, and he's like, okay, Todd, hurry up and finish. Hurry up and finish, because i got to touch my people in the water. I mean, it was just like, would you hurry up already? And, and it was just like the Lord, they're sitting on the edge of their seats. God's ready to move, and we just built faith. Well, anyway, this man by the name of Tom, he's a pastor there. And I want you to, I want you to take a look at this. Let me make sure I can find it and give it to you. Yeah, here it is. Are you ready? Say, I'm ready. ready. Oh, my Lord. Watch this. Oh, oh so hi, my name's Stephen Brower. I'm from New York. Um, I've, I, had, I had wheat intolerance to the point where if I consumed wheat, I'd get covered in hives and I would literally um, throw up whatever I consumed. Um, I came expecting. I actually raised my hand during the training and I said, I know what I'm going to get healed of. I'm going to bring a loaf of semolina to the meeting. I didn't have time to get the semolina, but after I got out of that water, my wife and I found a pizza place that was open till 3 a.m., and I consumed two slices of pizza on the way home. This morning when I woke up, I had an egg sandwich. I haven't had an egg sandwich in two years, on a roll. And after that, I was so excited that I went for the muffin. <laughs> God is faithful because it's real. It's real. I can eat whatever I want now. So thank you very much, Lord. I do appreciate you. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Now in that meeting, there were just like all these pastors that were present. So y'all know Lewis Harrell. Lewis is just one of our lay guys in the church. Just one of the guys. He prays every time we have a prayer meeting. He and his wife are always there. He drove up there. Somehow he was up there a few months early and met this guy, the bishop, not this man. Long story short, I don't want to confuse you. They connected. Now, Lewis is going to New York just sharing testimonies. And people are getting healed in the water. They're requesting for Lewis to come to their churches. Now, this is the Church of God denomination. Because so many of them were present in the meeting and saw that this is no hype. This is not emotionalism. It is not working people up into a frenzy. We ask nothing from you, right? Pretty much 99% of the time, maybe Pakistan Bible, that may be all the thing that we ask, and ask for you to pray. Y'all understand the simplicity of it. Um, and those men of God saw that this is just genuine. And when they got into the water, now I don't know what kind of bread he ate, but it sounded delicious. Similila, what is it? 
Yeah, I, I mean, he talked so fast I couldn't understand it. But then you'll have egg sandwich the next morning and a muffin. I mean, if you're going to be a bear, be a grizzly, right? I mean, he just went all after it. He did everything. He just got everything that he could. And, uh, <laughs> and so, and so uh, that's what we're seeing, guys. That's what we're seeing. Not, not just four years ago or five years ago, but that's what we're seeing currently. This is what the Lord is doing in the earth right now. Not the only thing, but a part of it. Because he gets all the glory, all the honor, and he is able to meet people, not through a man's gifting or woman's gifting, which is possible and he still does, but it's like an individual counseling session, therapy session, doctor visit, surgery. It's amazing how you'll have three people in the water. This individual just needs some counseling from the Lord. This person over here needs to be healed from some wounds in the past. This folks over here, these folks over here need cancer evicted from their body. Right? All three of them, Jesus is ministering to them at different levels, not through the gifting of an individual, but he himself is ministering through them. That's when he said, Todd, I am going to baptize people with Holy Spirit and fire in the water. How many of you know that fire can warm you? How many of you know that fire can burn some stuff up? Everybody knows anything about gas engines? How many of you know that fire can empower you? It can do all those things and much, much, much more. So when you get into the water tonight, whatever that point of need is, Come into the water fully surrendered, fully yielded to God, and let Him do what He wants to do. Don't demand a certain verdict. Don't be disappointed if you don't get what you came in for, because He is the wonderful Prince of Peace. He's the wonderful Counselor. He's the wonderful Therapist. He's the wonderful Deliverer. I mean, he's all of that and much, much more. Just lie down in the water and let the Lord minister to you as he sees fit. On your first visit, it may be there's just some junk that he needs to clear up before he goes to the physical side of you. Because I've seen this over and over and over again. People get healed physically, but yet there's still some spiritual rottenness or infection in their soul. And so they have this dramatic encounter with God. I mean like an eye open up or an ear open up. But yet they never dealt with or fully surrendered that alcohol or that perversion in their life. And so they get their body healed and they think, well, God must be okay with the way I'm living and never purge this area of their life. Just surrender to the will of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God in the water. He already knows what's going on in your physical body. He already knows where the pain is. He knows where the trauma is. He knows where it all is. And what he simply needs is your yes, I'm willing to die. I'm surrendering tonight. I'm coming for personal revival. See, what we don't need is a bunch of healed bodies alone. We need some healed hearts. We need some healed minds. We need some healed spirits. Come on, talk about it. I, I, we need prodigals to come home. We need those that cuss out of one side of the mouth and speak in tongues with the other side of the mouth. We need some tongues sanctified tonight. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. I feel it. I feel it. Don't get mad at me tonight. But listen, we, we, we've got people up here lifting holy hands, but yet they're robbing God without the tithe. Come on. We, we, we need sanctification of everything in our life. Come and just die in the water and let God have it all. Are y'all okay? Talk to me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right. Yep, 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 yep. You can be seated. All y'all be seated. Y'all making me nervous right now because I, I love when you stand, but I think, man, I got to get in the water. Watch this. I want you to watch this. I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now, you're going to want to stand for this one. 
there's something that God's doing in Knoxville, Martinsville, Dawsonville, Jacksonville. It must be something with the Vils. I don't know. I've been there three or four times. And every single time, God just moves in the water. The last night that we were here, it was last week, I told the pastor, I said, Pastor, just obey you the Holy Spirit. He's transitioning the service, getting ready to bring me up. He says, I got to obey the Holy Ghost. Pastor Todd said, obey the Holy Ghost. So he said, I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. He said, I need a personal reset. He says, I'm about to get into the water right now. He pulls out his wallet, he takes his phone out, and he gets into that baptismal tank. And he goes underneath that water, and the presence of God touches him. And the next thing I know, I look up, and everybody else is getting ready to get into the water. And I'm sitting there going, and I'm just enjoying it because I didn't have to do a thing. <laughs> Are y'all okay? I love him. I love him. Yeah, let me get you here. All right, watch this. This is a lady in Knoxville at Glory Church. Pastor Jay, have you been there? You've been there, so you know. Baptist Church. Got turned on to the things of God. Full of the Holy Ghost now. Deliverance ministry. So watch this lady's testimony with her son that was healed of autism. Watch this. You're going to love it. Yeah, turn that up a little bit. Thank you. Twice here. I'm on the way to the water and in the water he would scream, no Jesus. He didn't want to get in the water. Um, he was diagnosed with autism when he was two. He was diagnosed with severe expressive receptive language disorder and sensory processing disorder. He would spin in circles constantly. He did finger posturing and tiptoe walking. And, um, after we got him in the water, he just began to thrive. He gained weight and grew, which we couldn't get him to do from the time he was nine months old. He was 36 pounds. And he became potty trained. He got to start kindergarten with his age group on time in a general education class, which is an IEP that he didn't even have to use. He gets to go to first grade this year. His teacher said he was the smartest kid in his class. He's doing amazing. Tell him I love Jesus. I love Jesus. So you would say that his encounter with the Lord in the water, God just touched him? Oh yeah, God healed him and continues to heal him. It's been an ongoing process. Every time I think that he started to regress, the Lord just shoots him forward even more. Mm -hmm. I see more and more all the time. I have in my file, because we wanted documentation of his story. She sent me a packet of that thick of his medical history and his testings that the medical field did and scored like on a 60 where they said he has severe learning disabilities. Severe learning disabilities. We rec he won't be able to keep up with kids. He has behavioral issues, can't relate to kids. He's disruptive. I'm talking about the whole file. Is absolutely, I've got it. Then he gets baptized. She sat down in that water with that boy in his lap. I've got the pictures. I don't have it loaded up here. And she clutched him like this and went underneath that water. She's been in the water multiple times, Pastor, multiple times. And Lord would begin to take layers off of that boy's life. Now let me just address this. Some people believe that I just need to go one time or ask one time and I'm okay. Well, that's not really scriptural. 
You come as often as you need to come to the Lord and ask Him for the same thing over and over and over again. Your Bible teaches that. Luke, read Luke 18, read Luke 11, and Matthew where he says, ask and keep on asking, seek and keep on seeking, and knock and keep on knocking. I mean, just, just read that. I don't have time to go into that teaching. And then, the date after his immersion, I think the next week he went to do some tests. And his numbers went up from 60 to 83. And they evaluated him. And they watched him over a period of time. And the reports would come back. Absolutely normal. No problems. Gets along with children. I mean, just the whole, the whole issue of all of his setbacks were eliminated by an encounter with Jesus with a mother that believed. And would bring him to the water and bring him again and again. Now, how many of us in this room have ever gone to a doctor more than once? They gave you a prescription, you took it, and you did not get it. You got a little better, but you didn't get as good. What did you do? You made a phone call, you set up another appointment, and you went back. It helped you. But you needed a little bit more help. How many of you ever gone the third time? How many of you ever got a second opinion? Why is it that we'll go to the arm of the flesh multiple times? To get better, but we'll give Jesus one shot. Jesse Green, I don't know if you've ever, if you know who she is. She said, get into the water a thousand times if it takes it. A thousand times. Until you get waterlogged or you die. Now here's a story that that messed you up. We had a lady get into the water. Came to be healed. But she wasn't doing good. She She was very, very sick. But her request was, I want to get to the water. In Dawsonville. She gets down into the water. Has a sweet baptism. Now watch this. Just smile. Falls out in the spirit. They float her to the side. And five minutes later, she has a stroke. We're thinking she's out in the spirit. But we notice, the team noticed something's not right. They call the ambulance, take her away. And she dies. Now, for some people, that ruins the revival for them. Well, if, I thought y'all said y'all had healings. I didn't say that we batted a thousand. You never hear me say that. But we're not batting zero either. So we lawyered up. For the simple reason, we wanted to be prepared if there was a lawsuit. Making sure that we had all of our documentation, that we had all the photographs, all the imagery, you know what I'm saying, all the videos, to prove that there was no negligence on our part. You understand what I'm saying? That she didn't drown, that she didn't do anything. So we we were just preparing to be sued. Because I know people sue people for everything. And so we were preparing for that. And then about three weeks, we get this letter from the family. She says, I just want you to know, my mama had a wish that before she died, to be baptized in Dawsonville and to have an encounter with Jesus in the water. And she said, my mama's baptisms was so sweet. And the last thing that she did before she met him, she met him in the water. She says, our family's good. We took a deep breath. Do you understand that? Now, why am I telling you all of that? 
I don't know what the Lord's going to do with you tonight, but I do know He will touch you in some way. He will meet you. Don't be disappointed in Him. Don't be disappointed in Him. Come expecting the greatest thing. But if He chooses to remove the gallbladder before He removes, <laughs> spiritually speaking, you know what I'm saying? Before He does open heart surgery on you, Except that he's the great physician and he knows what is best. And then I would come next month. And then the next month. And the next month. That's what we tell people. Here's what I learned. If I take no credit for the healings, I have to take no blame when they don't get healed. But I do take some responsibility when they don't get well. I don't take the blame. I take some responsibility. There's a difference. What could I have done better? Could we have prayed more? Could we have prepared the way better? How was the faith in the water? We tell people sometimes they're so sick they can't even believe for a healing. Have you ever been that way before that you've been so sick throwing up? You're just like, I, don't even, I can't even pray. We tell them we'll leverage our faith for you. That's why it's important that those that work the water are not just coming in to get wet and to assist in baptisms. That there is an element of where you believe that when you baptize them, He's coming and He's going to meet them in the water. <laughs> Blessed be His holy name tonight. Come on, lift your hands. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Blessed be His holy name. Lord, we thank You that You're going to touch us tonight. You're going to meet us in the water. And Lord, You're going to shift and change everything this evening. One last one. And I'm going to tell you this. And I think this is, this is a beautiful story. I was in Bakersfield, California. And this is an image of stage 4 uh, breast cancer. This is a scan. And I don't know where you can, you can see the computer mouse. Where um, This is a reflection. I don't know. Somebody's taken the picture. She's taken the picture. And here's the doctor. And on the screen. And right here, you see the mouse? He's highlighting where the cancer is in her, in, in her breast. I went to Bakersfield, California in January of this year. Did two nights. It was just a beautiful meeting. I never preached before uh, in America where I had, had to have a translator. Uh, the building was bilingual, you know what I'm saying, or uh, multicultural, I should say. And, and so I'm preaching, and they're preaching. I'm telling a the story. They're telling a the story. It was beautiful. She came that night and got born again. This girl got born again. And God did something for her in the water. So that's January. I go back in August. Karen's doing a women's conference in August at the same church that I preached at in January. This lady walks up to me and says, you're not going to believe what God did to me. Here's her story. Listen to this. Well, let me find it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Excuse me, guys, for just a moment. If I can't find it, I will tell you about it. Okay, I can't find it. I know it's here. I just saw it. Ewan's pray. <laughs> That's what they say in North Carolina. Ewan's pray. Ah, uh, thank you, Lord. Where is that? Where is that? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. She's in here somewhere. All right, well, and I know it. I can't find it. But I can show you what happened afterwards. Are y'all ready for that? I got a before and after. I just don't have her story, which was powerful. Thank you, Lord. I'm just giving it one more scan. Okay, so she gets baptized. And the Lord touches her. She got born again. Now look at the screen again. That's cancer. And that's after her baptism. Wow. 
You know, an email would have been nice to let us know that she got healed. And I asked her, and she tells about it on, on the video, what did the doctor say? They said, we've not seen anything like this. She not only had cancer in, in her left breast, but it was up on her spine and her lymph nodes. And they can't find it anywhere. I mean, that's him right there showing where it was, the before and after. I fully believe tonight that God's going to do this again. God's going to move in this house. I need you to stand to your feet and I need us to pray for a moment. Wesley, can you come up and play for me? There is a lot of warfare in the atmosphere over this building. No resistance in this room. The room is beautiful. But there's an agitation of, y'all know that, right? Because it's like he can't, the devil can't get in here. Because you guys have prepared the way for the Lord. And the Lord is here. Now they're buzzing all around the outside. And I know what he would do if he was here in his physical bone body. Jesus. There's such a tender spirit in the room. There's faith. Sincerity. Humility. Brokenness. Desire. And may I say favor in the room. There are some places I go to that it's really easy to get healed. Other places we have to work. Have you noticed that? Sometimes it's just the room is electric and ready to go and faith is high and people, there'll be a vein of healing. There'll be just like this run, four, five, six, seven, eight people in a row. There were times that Jesus would go to a village and heal them all. But then when he went to his own hometown, he only did a few miracles. I want the village where he healed them all. He's coming tonight for us. Revival's in the air. This is a revival house. This is a revival hub. This is a revival congregation. It's a John the Baptist. Not talking about the rough, and I'm just talking it prepared the way of the Lord. So, Lord, I ask you tonight, my loving Savior, my friend, my bridegroom, my father, my shepherd. I ask you tonight to confirm everything that you have done in the past and the words that we shared tonight with new signs and wonders and miracles tonight. I pray for revival. I stoke the coals. I breathe air, Lord Jesus, on the foundation here, the fire, the coals. We just breathe air, oxygen, fresh breath in this room. Stamina, strength, fortitude, tenacity, grit, all of it. Do you hear me? All of it in this room. We'll fight the fight. Tenderize our hearts. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. With your heads bowed, eyes closed, who's getting in the water tonight, right now? I mean, you just feel the Lord nudging you. Lift your hand all across the room. I see him. I see him. Okay. All right. Leave your hand up. Father, I thank you that they're saying yes to you tonight. Meet them at their point of need. But Lord, even beyond that, meet them at their point of the deepest need. Awaken what is asleep inside of them. Arouse, stir, Lord, the giftings on the inside of them. Remove the cobwebs from their life, God, the fog, the pain, the disappointment, the inconsistencies. Right now, in this house, touch them, Father. Even as they sit and wait to get into the water, touch them while they're sitting. Lord, as they climb the steps, maybe if there's a drop of water on the steps, it begins to burn, Lord Jesus, everything that doesn't please you out of their life. We love you and we surrender our lives. And everybody in this room said yes and amen and amen, amen. I'm going to get Pastor Jason or Pastor Shelly up here. And she's going to give us some instructions. I noticed I didn't get to the scriptures tonight. I'll get to them tomorrow night, all right. I gave you word, but I just didn't get you to put your eyes on the scripture, right? So would you help me welcome Pastor Shelly as she comes. Let her know you love her. Praise God.